travel to St. Louis to test their perfect record against the suddenly dangerous Cardinals. Today, the NFL Game of the Week provides a State of the Union message concerning the two participants in Super Bowl XIII. The Pittsburgh Steelers appear even more menacing this season, thanks to a talent glut that replaces injured starters with brilliant ready reserves. Even at this early stage, the team appears a shoe-in for Super Bowl XIV in Pasadena. If the Cowboys are in trouble, neither Tom Landry nor his players show it. Perhaps the reason was their opponents, the Chicago Bears. For two decades, Chicago quarterbacks have been nothing more than glorified head waiters dishing off menus to running backs, Willie Gallimore, Gale Sayers, and number 34, Walter Payton. Against the Doomsday defense, wonderful Walter exploded for 134 yards on 22 carries. Since Payton handles the ball 65% of the time, many suggest matters would be simplified if he stood under center and let the offense go from there. Critics say Vince Evans, number eight, is just another short Southern Cal quarterback with little touch or feel for the game. Evans, caught in the Bears' revolving door quarterback situation, was sacked five times by the blitzing Cowboys. Leading an offense that is snidely characterized as a wing, a prayer, and a Peyton, Evans displayed an uncertain arm, but the knack for scrambling out of desperate situations. Evans' ability to run accounted for the Bears' first touchdown on a quarterback draw. Chicago sought revenge for the 37-7 pasting Dallas handed them in the playoffs two years ago. They knew the Cowboys were treating them lightly, and victory number three became a distinct possibility. For many years, the Bears have been known as a tough team. This was really a euphemism for being able to take a lot of punishment, much like former heavyweight boxer George Chevallo. Things have changed, for when the Bears met the Cowboys, they stood as the top-ranked defense in the NFL. To reach Roger Staubach, the Bears blitz linebackers, even safeties. This strategy often rattles young quarterbacks, but usually backfires against seasoned ones. Staubach defeated the Blitz with a perfect 42-yard scoring pass to number 80, Tony Hill. It was a brilliant start on a day that would see the 37-year-old veteran throw for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. In their first two games, the Cowboys were betrayed by an inability to run the football. All this seems solved by the return of Tony Dorsett, number 33. In the game, Dorsett rushed for over 100 yards, but this achievement was undercut by three costly fumbles that ruined almost certain Cowboy scores. Turnovers are often a byproduct of the staggering numbers of plays and flim-flams the Cowboys employ. They are often criticized for experimenting like a dilettante, when in fact they could stop opponents like a street gang. Leading 10 to 7 at the start of the second half, the Cowboys tried to step on the Bears quickly.
Rookie free agent Steve Wilson's 83-yard touchdown was wiped out by a clipping penalty, and a game that was once surely in the Cowboys' grasp soon got quickly out of hand. The Doomsday defense led the NFL in sacks a year ago. Coming into the Bear game, they had dropped quarterbacks just twice, and their old-time fury seemed to have vanished at the same time Too Tall Jones disappeared from the football field to the boxing ring. counter Vince Evans' facility for moving in and out of the pocket, the Cowboys opted to blitz on sure passing downs. This strategy cost them dearly when Evans hooked up with number 83, Golden Richards, for an easy 52-yard touchdown. Bears missed the extra point and led 13 to 10 in the third quarter. In their first two games, Dallas victories were predicated on Roger Staubach's remarkable ability to manufacture a score at every critical juncture. Cowboys' wellspring of plays is almost bottomless, but near the goal line, the tried-and-true method is to get the ball to tight end Billy Joe Dupree, number 89. Dupree's touchdown made the score 17 to 13 at the end of the third period. By this time, the Cowboys had all but taken Walter Payton out of the game. So for the Bears to win, Vince Evans would have to produce a score in the clutch. The Cowboys' conventional coverages had all but shut out Evans. But on this Sunday, they appeared to have a death wish on defense. And just as they had done on Golden Richards' touchdown, they blitzed, which left single coverage on the Bears' most dangerous receiver. James Scott, number 89, beat Aaron Kyle to the ball in the end zone for a 64-yard touchdown as Chicago regained the lead over Dallas 20-17 in the last quarter. Vince Evans had completed five of 16 passes for 118 yards, 116 of them coming on the two blitz beaters to Richards and Scott. For the third time in three weeks, the Cowboys would try to pull out a victory in the final minutes. It is at this moment in a football game that the value of Preston Pearson, number 26, cannot be overestimated. In three plays, the Cowboys move from their 29 to the Bears' 22. From there, Staubach delivered a seemingly innocent wide receiver screen to Tony Hill. Hill's 22-yard scamper returned the lead to Dallas 24-20 and is worth reviewing for three reasons. Number one, the play selection was immensely resourceful. Number two, a hole open due to number 67 Pat Donovan's block on number 24 Virgil Livers. Number three, the running ability of Tony Hill along such a narrow corridor. With less than two minutes to play, the Bears had to travel 80 yards for a touchdown, since an earlier extra point canceled their chance for a tying field goal. Two members of the resurrected left side of the Dallas defense made key plays. Number 65 tackle David Stalls made the first one, and then with a fourth and eight from the 28, rookie defensive end Bruce Thornton applied the crusher.
Thornton, number 77, reminds Dallas people of another raw rookie who stormed out of East Texas State seven years ago to eat up quarterbacks. His name was Harvey Martin, and he bloomed from a situation specialist into an all-pro. For Vince Evans and the Bears, there was time to anguish over what could have or should have been. There were many possibilities to explain the fermentation of some sour grapes as Dallas escaped for their third narrow victory to remain undefeated. Although the Bears' luck was bad this day, it was nothing compared to that of the St. Louis Cardinals.